This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1344, The Sunk Cost Fallacy, Stop Digging, by Joel of 5amjoel.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Happy Friday. Thank you for listening in. This is the show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, sometimes a little too enthusiastically. Do you have a question you'd like answered here on the show? Go ahead and send it over to finance at oldpodcast.com and you just might hear from me soon. But for now, let's get to today's post as we optimize your life. The Sunk Cost Fallacy, Stop Digging by Joel of 5amjoel.com. Ever heard of the sunk cost fallacy? I was at the grocery store the other day. There was only one checkout lane open and a long line of customers in front of me. Waiting around, I struck up a conversation with the guy in front of me. Really nice guy. He was headed to a Memorial Day barbecue and came to the store just to pick up some ice. But I had some bad news for him. I already walked past the ice freezer earlier at the front of the store and there was no ice left. I had even asked one of the store workers if there was any other ice in stock and they assured me it was all sold out. It was Memorial Day after all, which apparently is the second biggest barbecue day of the year. Anyway, I dropped the bad news on my new friend in line. Sorry, bro, there's no ice left. You're lying enough for nothing. I felt bad for him because he came all the way to the store, waited in line for 15 minutes, and then found out that the single item he came for wasn't even available. But the strangest thing happened. He continued to wait in line. Even after hearing there was no ice, he didn't leave. He continued to stand around in the frustratingly long line. I just couldn't understand why. At first, I thought he was planning to buy something else at the checkout, like a stick of gum or something. But when we finally got to the front, he asked the checkout lady if there was any ice left. She said no and explained what he already knew, that they were sold out. After some awkward silence, the guy dropped his head, admitted defeat, and left the store with nothing. The sunk cost fallacy. This happens when you make decisions based on past sunken cost of time or money rather than future upside or results. The grocery store guy had two options when he first learned there was no ice left. Number one, leave immediately with no ice. Number two, waste more time then still leave with no ice. He chose option B. Why? Because he wasn't ready to accept the loss of the time he had already sunk it made him feel better to stay a bit longer and waste more time. Unfortunately, we all do it. As humans, we have a fear of failure and a fear of loss. We hate losing so bad that we continue to throw away more time and money just to delay crappy results, even if it's inevitable. Here are some other common examples that you see all the time. Wasted time. Jenny continued to date the wrong guy for three additional years, even though she knew it was a bad relationship because she had invested so much time in the guy. Steve walked into a movie theater and within 15 minutes, he knew the movie was but he continued to stay and suffer through the entire film anyway because he wanted to get his money's worth. Martin got a master's degree in accounting. He hates accounting, but yet he searches for a job as an accountant because he wants to put his degree to good use. Poor Martin suffers for seven long years before quitting and becoming a ski instructor. Wasting money. John bought 40 shares of GE stock last year. The price went down, so he bought more. Then prices dropped further, so he bought even more. John continues to buy this declining stock because he's buying at a discount compared to his original investment. Stan has an expensive truck with fuel and maintenance costs two times more than an economy car. He knows he should sell it, but doesn't because he would never be able to recoup the time and money for all the upgrades he's put in over the years. Mandy gets given the first seven seasons of Friends on DVD for free. She goes online and buys seasons eight through 10 only so she can own the complete set even though all seasons and episodes are available on Netflix for free with her account. Stop wasting time and money. So how do we get better and fight against the sunk cost fallacy? Number one, get good at saying no. 
Half the battle is recognizing that there is a fallacy and teaching yourself to say no to your basic instincts. You have choices. Try saying no to things that are free. Saying no to anything that doesn't add value to your future self. Number two, fail fast, fail often. The best way to overcome your fear of loss and failure is practice loss and failure regularly. I know it doesn't sound fun, but cutting your losses is such a freeing activity, like letting go of a massive burden that you've been carrying around for a while. Number three, let bygones be bygones. The past is the past. The very definition of sunk cost is cost, time or money that is sunk and can't be recovered. Since there's nothing you can do about it, there's no reason you should include the weight of sunk costs into your decision-making criteria. Base your decisions on the future results. I'll conclude with this gem of a quote. It hurts to let go, but sometimes it hurts more to hold on. You just listened to the post titled The Sunk Cost Fallacy, Stop Digging by Joel of 5amjoel.com. Okay, so please tell me that I am not the only one who thought the man who wanted ice at the beginning of this post, he, I'm not sure that he stayed in line due to the sunk cost fallacy. I immediately thought that he just didn't believe Joel that there was no more ice. He had to see for himself. But there were plenty of other examples of the sunk cost fallacy in this post, and I'm sure you can find even more in your own life. One that came to mind for me was when I was in the earlier stages of planning the economy conference. I originally wanted to sell tickets through a Kickstarter campaign because I thought it'd be good for marketing purposes. And I know some other people who were successful with Kickstarter on similar projects. I did a ton of research. I told everyone about my plans. I interviewed multiple filmmakers to produce an awesome video and overall was pretty attached to this idea. However, it was going to be a huge investment of time and money. And through this process, I discovered there were multiple reasons why it might not work out as well as I originally thought. It was a tough decision to make, but I ultimately ditched the Kickstarter plan and just opened up ticket sales through Eventbrite. It was a difficult decision because I was so invested in my original idea and I was tempted to dismiss all that I had learned along the way and just do the Kickstarter anyway. But in the end, I'm glad I didn't let the sunk cost fallacy drive that decision. And that'll do it for today. Have a great day and start to your weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll be back here over the weekend where your optimal life awaits.